Meditation is a teacher. In fact, meditation is the best teacher on earth. Why? Because meditation teaches us who we really are. When we start meditating, we have all these different thoughts and feelings and emotions and sensations that are arising and it can be distracting and it can be like, okay, what am I supposed to focus on? I have so many different thoughts and the voice in the head is very loud and active and so there's all this mental chatter going on and for most people when they start meditating and they start experiencing this it's too much it's too distracting and so they give up and they move on to something else but if we can just stay in the moment and we can practice awareness then we can get past those first few minutes of the meditation and we can enter that inner stillness here's the thing about meditation and dealing with distracting thoughts you know one of the, the biggest misconceptions that, that people have with meditation, one of the biggest misconceptions, is that meditation is all about trying to control your thoughts or it's about trying to still the mind and not think about anything. And while that is uh, the result of meditation, we could say, that's what happens eventually as the person stays in the meditation. They get into deeper meditative states and they do experience a state of no thought and inner stillness that is not the that's not the goal that's not what we're trying to do especially in the first few minutes of meditation because the more we try to still the mind the more we try to control the more we try to control our thoughts the harder it becomes to do the very thing we're trying to do and so instead of that we're just simply being aware we're watching our thoughts we're observing them and as we just become aware of them, the more they will fade away and they'll become less and less. And then gradually that inner stillness that is within the depths of our being will pull us into the deeper realms of that stillness, of that peace. And then very naturally, we'll just kind of float into it. But we're not attaining it. We can't try to get there. We just float into it. We just... Uh, are pulled into it you know you could say but what the mind is trying to do during this time is the mind is trying to grab at our attention the mind is trying to distract us and if we are believing that we are our thoughts and we believe that we are our minds then this is when we're going to get frustrated we're going to give up and maybe you know we'll never meditate again this is the story for many people they've tried meditating for sometimes years you know a long time they can't get past the mind they can't get past those first few minutes and they just set it aside but the truth about it is we don't have to give up we don't have to set it aside we don't have to quit because it's a lot simpler than what the mind is making it and so we are just simply being aware we're witnessing we're observing for those first few minutes we're Having this posture of just letting go, letting the energy, letting the, the thoughts and emotions flow through us. And then, like I said, the more we do that, the more the thoughts and the emotions and the different ideas and distractions will just kind of fade away. And so it's like looking at clouds in the sky. That's You could compare the clouds to thoughts. You just watch the thoughts. You watch the clouds do their thing. They come they hang out for a little while, and then they go, they pass on. And that's the nature of everything that we can observe. Everything that we can experience in our external world is moving, it's passing. Some things hang around longer than others, but there's that old saying, this too shall pass, and that is true for everything in this 3D material world. And so, when you're in your meditation, and you're just sitting back, and you're watching your thoughts, the thoughts are passing, they're coming, some are staying longer, longer than others, but the more we detach, the more we just observe, the more the light, of our, the light of our awareness shines into the thoughts, into the feelings, into the emotions, the more they pass and the more they flow. And so all of our thoughts are just energy and the natural tendency of energy is to flow, is to move. But when we become attached to a thought, when we identify with a thought, when we become obsessed with a thought, then we grab onto it and, and unknowingly we're actually giving that thought power, we're giving it fuel, and that's when it controls our lives, that's when it overtakes our lives, and that creates a blockage in the energy flow, and then that's what eventually leads to some kind of negative external manifestation, and we experience things like anxiety, 
and fear and worry and insecurity and all these other things. Why? Because there's an energy blockage and that's the negative external manifestation. So what do we do? Well, instead of holding on to the thought, instead of identifying with the thought, we take a step back, we detach, and then we simply, like I said, we bring the light of our awareness into the darkness and the light dissipates it and the blockage is is removed and the energy can flow and this too shall pass and that's a great mantra you know if you're looking for a good mantra to have during your meditation just meditate on that meditate on this too shall pass this too shall pass because that's the truth the thought that you're having the feeling the emotion the experience whatever it is it's passing and as you let it go as you just sit back and and become aware of it you're allowing that thing, you're allowing that energy to do what it does, which is flow, move, pass on. So when we do start meditating and we start practicing this, and we're just, like I said, we're watching our thoughts, like we would watch clouds pass in the sky, or like we would watch leaves pass down a stream. What we start to notice is, and this is where the the teaching aspect comes in what we start to notice is okay if i can observe my thoughts if i can watch my thoughts then what does this mean this means that i am not my thoughts because if i can observe something as an object then that means i am not the object i'm the subject and the subject cannot be the object and the object cannot be the subject so if you can observe it if you can witness it you are not that thing and so what you discover in meditation is that you are watching your thoughts. There's the you, but then there's the you behind the you that's aware, that's watching, that's observing all these different thoughts and feelings and emotions that are arising in your awareness. And you are the one, not you are not the thoughts, you are the one that's aware of the thoughts. You are the one behind the mind. And this awareness behind the mind is, is beautiful. It's just, it's stillness it's this this space of just pure peace and it's non-judgment it's non it's not judgmental it's just a uh, pure witness it's just observing it's just watching it's just looking and so when you are observing when you are witnessing what you'll notice about the witness is that it's not trying to change the thoughts. It's not trying to edit the thoughts. It's not judging the thoughts. It's just, it's just witnessing with full acceptance. And that full acceptance, the light of that love and acceptance and awareness is dissipating the darkness that's surrounding the negative energy or whatever it is that is blocking the flow within us. And so it all goes back to the witness. But if we are identifying with thoughts if we are identifying with our past or with the ego or the egoic tendencies and all the things all the conditioning then we're going to be unaware of who we really are which is not our thoughts not our feelings not our emotions not what so and so said about us not what we were told that we have to be but the pure space, the pure awareness, the pure consciousness that's behind all of that. That is who we really are. That is the witness. The witness never changes. The witness is constant. It's that sense of I amness. It's that it's that sense of pure isness. Now what's what's really amazing is, you know, I like to I like to compare the witness to the sky behind the clouds and so you have the clouds and the clouds would represent would represent thoughts that are coming and going they're passing but then the sky behind the clouds is always the same it never changes and it's just this pure empty space it's infinite it's eternal it's beyond time it's just pure isness that's the witness the witness is that space behind the clouds behind the thoughts that's just observing and it's detached from everything and that fundamentally is what you are. You are the awareness that is observing everything that you're experiencing. And again, if you're observing it, if you're witnessing it, then that thing that you're observing or witnessing cannot be you. And this is liberating. Why? Because all of a sudden, what you realize is that 
you don't have to be controlled by any kind of thought, by any kind of emotion. If it's a positive thought, if it's a positive feeling or emotion or whatever it is, you can enjoy it as the witness. You can experience it for a time, but you know whether it's a uh, doesn't matter if it's a if it's a positive or a negative thought or experience. It's passing, so you learn to live from this place of letting go and detachment, and instead of seeking peace and joy and satisfaction and fulfillment in all these external things and all these external objects and thoughts and experiences, you start to realize with the witness that peace and joy and fulfillment and satisfaction that you've been looking for, that you've been searching for, is actually inherent to your being. And the only way to actually experience joy beyond measure and peace that surpasses all understanding is not by a passing experience or not by a thought that's temporary, but it's by knowing the truth of your being as pure consciousness, as infinite, as eternal, as divine, because that is the deepest truth of your being. And so that is what you learn. That's what you discover. And, and you know, the thing about the witness is the witness shows you that in the present moment, you can be fulfilled. And the idea of some kind of thought or some kind of, like I said, external experience that's passing, the idea that that thing, that object out there is going to give you the peace that you're looking for is false. It's an illusion because it's passing. And if it's passing, then how can it give you eternal peace? How can it give you eternal joy or eternal fulfillment? It can't. The only thing that can give you eternal peace or joy or fulfillment is what is eternal and what is eternal? The I amness, the deepest truth of your being, which is just pure awareness. And it's beyond time and it's beyond space and it's beyond the body and beyond the mind and beyond the ego. It's really synonymous with the present moment. It's the eternal now. And this is where the witness is. The witness is rooted and grounded right here right now. And so if you're in the mind, if you're in the analytical thinking mind and you're, you know, attached to all these different thoughts of the past and of the future, that is where the majority of shame and guilt and anxiety and fear come from. We're living in these, uh, in these realities that don't really exist. They're subjective. They're in our minds. They're not the, the objective truth of the eternal now of the present moment, which is really all that is. So this is what happens when we're living in our headspace and we're unaware of the present moment and we're unaware of who we really are behind the mind, beyond all the thoughts and feelings and emotions that are coming and going. All those things are temporary, but there is something that, and it's not even a thing, but I'm just saying that, that is eternal and that is the witness that is what is watching that is the truth of your being which is eternal and infinite and divine so this is what meditation teaches us meditation shows us who we really are and an awakening awakening to who we really are is the key to ego transcendence because the ego is a mental construct it's an illusion it's just another thing that the mind is doing. And so you can't transcend the ego. You can't fight the ego off because that would be like shadow boxing. That would be trying to fight something off that isn't there. But in discovering who you really are, the light of your true self starts to shine in the darkness of the ego. And it's, I don't mean darkness like in a, a negative way. I'm not saying the ego is necessarily bad because it's not. It's not good or bad. It's just it's neutral, you could say, I guess, but the light of consciousness, the light of the witness, the light of pure awareness starts to shine and the ego dissipates into the illusion that it is. And so it's like, you know, does darkness really exist in a room? Well, I don't know. You turn on the light and what happens? The darkness goes away. But is does darkness exist or is darkness just the absence of light? So think about that with the true self. The true self is, uh, is has been compared in a symbolic way to light so as we awaken to the truth of our being behind all the different things all the different egoic tendencies and thoughts and feelings and emotions 
that is a light that turns on or a light that we become aware of that's always on, but we're just becoming aware of it. We're becoming um, aware of the, the presence of it. Then all of a sudden, that is when true ego transcendence happens without even trying to transcend the ego because we're just aware of who we are now and that light is leading the way and that light causes anything in our lives that isn't real that is illusory to dissipate okay so that's how it happens and this awakening to the true self is the realization of the witness the pure consciousness the pure awareness that is just detached from everything and it's not this it's not that nete nete but it stands behind and it just observes and it's totally content it's totally fulfilled it's just pure isness and it's free you don't have to attain it you don't have to achieve it you don't have to earn it it's not a religion it's not something that you have to believe in it's the deepest truth of your being. It's always been true. It's inherent. So it's just about realizing. It's just about awakening to it. So meditation is what shows us who we really are. And then it allows us to experience who we really are. And that's why I say meditation is the best teacher of all time. Because I can't think of really anything else that has done such a amazing job at this for thousands of years and you know meditation is it can it can start off as a, a practice as something that you're doing for 20 minutes or something 15 minutes a day but then the more you meditate the more you realize that meditation is so much more than just a practice or just something that you do in the mornings no meditation is a way of life it's a lifestyle. So, and you know, a lot of people think that meditation is an escape from life. It's not that at all. It's actually the opposite. Meditation is not an escape from life. It's preparation for life. That's what Thich Nhat Hanh said. It's, it's a teacher for life. It's training us how to live. And so it's not, we're not escaping anything. No, we're actually learning how to live fully in the present moment, which is what life is all about. But if we're living in the headspace and we're living according to all these different thoughts and feelings and emotions that are attached to the past and the future then that is actually the real escape from life that is actually living not fully here and not experiencing the fullness of what is so that's meditation is bringing you into reality it's bringing you into what is it's allowing you to see the the beauty and the the sacred presence of the present moment. So when we start meditating, like I said, we move beyond the idea of it just being a practice. And then all of a sudden we move on in life. We go about our day after we you know, practice meditation at, at some point, like in the mornings, and we realize, hey, this is actually training for life. And so you start experiencing stuff in your life, situations, circumstances come up. And instead of being attached, instead of allowing these external things to control us, there's this presence, there's this grace, and we fall back into the witness just like we would in meditation during a, a practice. And just like we would observe our thoughts and we would watch our thoughts in meditation, we do the same thing with life. We observe, we watch, there's consciousness in every situation. And then that consciousness, that awareness, is what is teaching us, is what is enabling us to respond when we need to respond or react when we need to react in a loving way, in a, in, a, in a way that's full of peace and clarity and understanding and compassion and kindness. So it's going to be positive and this is going to lead, lead to positive outcomes. Instead of acting and responding uh, from the ego, from this place of unconsciousness where, you know, these, these bursts of anger come out or we say something we don't want to say that we regret or do something that we don't want to do. We're acting from pride. We're acting from uh, just a low level of consciousness. And then from that comes negative uh, consequences or, or, or negative circumstances. Instead of that, no, we are 
responding from this place of pure awareness, pure consciousness. And this is because we learned in meditation how to sit back as the witness, as the one that's just observing, of, of watching and letting things pass by, letting things do their thing without becoming attached to those things. We, that carries over into the world, into our lives, into whatever we're doing. And again, this is what is allowing us to make better decisions, to respond more appropriately, to make action when we need to make action. But it's all coming from this place of balance and grounding, which is what the practice of meditation does. So during our practice in the mornings, let's say it's five to 10 minutes. If we do that every morning, we know that meditation is much more than the little five to 10 minute practice, but the five to 10 minute practice is essential. It's necessary because it's reminding us and it's grounding us in the witness, in the pure awareness that's behind all the things that the mind is, is grabbing at and trying to identify with. Then we go about our day and there's this peace and serenity and grace and flow to our lives because, like I said, meditation is no longer just a practice that we're doing, but it's who we are. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of life. And this is what it's all about. So the next time you meditate, try to cultivate the witness and make this something that you're doing on a regular basis. Make it daily where you're sitting back and you're feeling that presence, that I amness that never changes that's always right here now in the present moment and really sit back in that witness and just watch, observe with no judgment, just unconditional love and acceptance and let the energy around you flow, let it do its thing. And you will discover that that peace that you've been searching for beyond understanding has always been right here, right now, in the present moment, in the eternal now, within the depths of your being, in the heart, in the center of the witness, the one who is looking, pure awareness, pure consciousness. That is who you really are, okay? So, if you found this video helpful, informative, or insightful, please leave a thumbs up at the bottom of the screen and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.